BIF as a platform is built so that develop developers can come in and make things quite easily and create experiences that are fairly straightforward in a short period of time. But it also has the capability of allowing developers to create much more complex experiences. And so what I'm going to do here is use a few weather examples to start it off to show you sort of the spectrum of, of what it can do. So starting on sort of the basic. What's the weather like at home today? Right? Pretty straightforward. Our friends from Weather Underground get it. Pretty straightforward type of a query. But let's ratchet it up a little bit. Was it raining in Seattle three Thursdays ago? Right? So great. Weather Underground to the rescue again. But as you can see, Viv has a much stronger understanding when you can teach it and develop the natural language aspects of it. And I'm going to take another even bigger leap to sort of a question that you might not ask, actually, but just to show you a little more of the power. Will it be warmer than 70 degrees near the Golden Gate Bridge after 5 p.m. the day after tomorrow? OK. So this is a pretty sophisticated query. Very few assistants in the world do stuff like this. But this is where Viv can be trained up by developers. So with that, let's go behind the scenes. Let me show you a little bit about how this works. OK, so what we're looking at here is the Viv Developer Center. This is the place where developers will go and develop new apps and teach Viv new things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load one of the queries that I did earlier. I'm going to run that. And then we are going to open the curtains a little bit and take a look at what's going on inside. So it looks fairly straightforward here, but there's actually something pretty extraordinary going on. So the first thing that we do is we have our friends from Nuance who we're using for our speech recognition today turn the sounds into words. Then you can see. We have a very sophisticated natural language understanding, and that generates something called an intent. But then here's where the magic comes in. So we've got a new technology that we've been working on patenting, and it's a computer science breakthrough called dynamic program generation. So when it understood the intent of the user, it generated this program. So this is software that's writing itself. And this is a really important aspect of scaling the assistant, because every other platform like it has a pro pro program manager that says, we're going to do movies or we're going to do something else. They're going to lay it out, and they program exactly what happens when you say some query related to some domain. It's hard coded. But that doesn't scale. This is a dynamic program that in 10 milliseconds is, writes itself that creates a, an execution program that goes out and ties the pieces of the services that you need, generates the dialogue, generates the layouts, does everything that happens after the intent. Let me show you one more example. So here's another query that I did earlier. Now, you remember this one a minute ago, much more sophisticated. Again, in 10 milliseconds, Viv wrote a 44-step program that figured out all of the details around the context of the fact that Golden Gate Bridge is a point of interest and when the day after tomorrow is, connecting all of the services in mind. It's pretty incredible technology. And so that's a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes. All right, you guys ready to have a little fun? Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do now is show you where we put our emphasis on the, the initial development of this. This is something we call conversational commerce. So the goal here is how easy can you make it to 
get things done by talking to things, right? So let me give you a few examples. Send Adam 20 bucks for the drinks last night. Hey, our friends from Venmo come up. It knows who Adam is. It knows what it's about. We're going to go ahead and send that. That's it. It's done. Adam's got his money. One sentence, and it's done. Let me continue. Send my mom some flowers for her birthday. Our friends from Pro Flowers come up with some beautiful arrangements here. But, well, she is a tulip lover. Let's try that. What about tulips? Great. So some beautiful arrangements here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Knows where my mother lives, seamlessly puts all that together, and we'll go ahead and buy that. And that's it. The flowers are on the way, right? Let's keep going. Get me a nice room in Palm Springs for Labor Day weekend. Our friends at Hotels.com come up with some cool options. Hey, I've stayed at the Andreas Hotel before. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. I think a deluxe room would be good. And let's book that. Has anyone ever seen a hotel booking that's that simple before? Come on, you guys. Is this exciting stuff or what? All right, let's do one more. I need a ride for six people from my office to Madison Square Garden. All right, so our friends from Uber are going to help us out here. Of course, they know that Viv knows that a car that takes six people requires an SUV or an XL. We're going to request the ride. All right, now they're looking. All right. Well, I'm sorry, Robert. I'm going to have to cancel this ride today, but hopefully we get a chance in the future. We're going to cancel that. OK. Now, let's see what we've got here. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call at the same time. What do you guys think? This is not, this is all 100% live. We just did four transactions in about two minutes by talking. So we're very excited about this stuff. Now, what I'm showing you here, <laughs> I don't know who's trying to get in touch with me, but I'm going to have to call him back. What I just showed you is just a, a small slice of where we see the world headed. You could imagine when you've got hundreds and thousands of developers plugging in new services, and you're able to make the efficiencies of using conversational commerce like this. So this is just the beginning. So let's go in and look just quickly at the inside of Viv's brain. What I'm showing you now is a little bit of a walkthrough of the actual capabilities on the inside of Viv today. So this is, these are the actual models that the developers are building into. I'll call this the universe of capabilities that are in there today. And this is just with a few people uh, at, the, at our office um, building these. So I, we can take a little walk through here. We can say, like, You can go look at what the weather person built. So it gives you a sense for how to model something in here, what the models are consist of. Let's take a look at another area. I haven't didn't really talk about much about this today, but I'm certainly going to partake in this tonight. So you get a sense for what's in this 
brain that we call. And this is going to be, you can sort of get a sense of this universe, and this is what the developers will be adding to over time, and you can imagine that with thousands of people entering, the power that this is going to gain. So let me summarize. So for consumers, Viv's going to be the intelligent interface to everything. You're going to be talking to all different kinds of things. It's going to be doing all sorts of things for you. And for developers, this is going to be the next great marketplace, right? You've got app stores today, but the thing that comes after app stores is this new type of marketplace, a marketplace that works for all the different kinds of devices that the Internet of Things will, and use cases that they'll generate, and a marketplace that will become the next big area.